Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast. From the Good Grub and Gears Car Show and Fall Festival in Stevenson yeah. Park in Friendswood, Texas, it's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, presented by the Space City Corvette Club and sponsored by Emmons Autoplex in Webster, Texas. Just ahead, another participant in today's show. Uh, we're going to turn the microphone over, get our sights set. Right here in the In Wheel Time remote booth. Don't look so glum. We're coming to you next. Really excited. I see that smile on your face. <laughs> excited now. You uh, later, Jeff has the racing calendar. Mars has this week in auto history, and I'll get you caught up on the stories making automotive news headlines this week. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin, <laughs> our chief engineer, David Ainsley, our special guest in the back. Mr. Jeffrey Heitzman, thank you very Jeffrey. much for stopping Thanks by. Thanks for coming, Jeffrey. And I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. Did I say your name? Nope. You didn't do the mm. David mm. Ainsley. There you go. There you go. Now it's official. You're here. Thank you. So You get residuals for that. Well, no, he does. <laughs> he does. I don't. No, yeah. he does. Uh-huh. His middle name. What's your middle name, David? Mm. Mm. There's a long story behind that. <laughs> and we can't tell it here. No, we can tell it. Oh, no, no, no. Have we told it before? We have. Okay, well, we'll and tell it again on, on, on one, of the, one, of the, one of the segments that were in the studio. How's that? Because we don't want to embarrass you here in, in, in open, person. In, we, yeah, we're in, in, in public. Per- we're yeah. in 50 countries, and there's only one of them that gets mad at us. <laughs> Which one is that? It's Russia. Russia. They, get mad? Oh, that's, yeah. they blocked yeah. us, didn't they? Blocked they? Us. We got, yeah. yeah, we're blocked in Russia now. Darn. Shucks. Nastrovia. <laughs> All right. All Vodka. I know, all I know, is it's Tammy from Texas EquiSearch. Well, yeah, I assume that you have a last name. I do, Phillips. Tammy, Tammy Phillips. Phillips. You know, he told us that earlier. We just didn't write it down. I didn't write, write it down. Write it down. That was ten minutes ago. We can't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, here's why we're going to talk to you because the proceeds from today's event go to Texas EquiSearch. Now it's up to you to tell us. I know what it is. You tell everybody in the world what Texas EquiSearch is and what it does. So Texas EquiSearch is a search and recovery organization. It was started almost 25 years ago by Tim Miller, who had lost his own daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, At the time, after she was recovered, she was recovered 17 months later. And, you know, at that time, there was not a lot of resources like we have today. There was no internet. There was, you know, you had a newspaper. There was no social media. There wasn't a big network of people who could come out and help you volunteer to help look for somebody exactly exactly so in 2000 tim miller started texas equisearch to help people families and also law enforcement find their loved ones to assist in whatever way that we could and when he started this organization he started it with his buddies who had horses and he lovingly refers to them as hillbillies on horseback (laughs) we've evolved since then now we use utvs and atvs instead of horses they're a little bit easier to manage in a search setting, but um, he thought he would be doing two to three searches a year when he started this organization, and today we get two to three requests for new cases every single day. Wow. Every day? Wow. Every day. Now, is that just here local in Houston, Texas, or is it across the country? No, we've been in 43 states and 11 countries. Wow. We have about 800 volunteer members that are spread out throughout the United States. They're primarily focused here in Texas. But um, do you guys have any idea how many people go missing every year? No, but you're going to tell us. I am going to tell you. So about 600,000 people a year are reported to law enforcement as missing in the United States. And they can't find them. They can't find them. Um, And and that doesn't include people that are never reported. You know, we got a call one day from a couple of foster kids. They had aged out of the foster system. They said, we were foster children in this home. And there was another person that we were with, and we haven't seen them in a year. We think they might be missing, but really didn't have any resources. And no one would have ever reported that person missing. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. So um, fortunately, out of that 600,000 people, about 97% of them are found within two or three days. It's not always a good outcome, but they're located. I was going to say, because if I'm not mistaken, I think that there are people that you do find that are alive. Yes, we, about half of the people we find are alive, which is fantastic, even though we're a search and recovery organization. Right. 
Uh, and because uh, I, I know that being uh, with Channel 13 and other news organizations mm-hmm. in town for all these years, that uh, I have been on uh, many uh, search operations that you guys are conducting. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to see it from the air because it's like, well, are they looking? Well, I see one ATV out there. But then you go to the parking lot, and there's three or four more, and there's three or four more, and three or four more, and this group, and this group, and this group, and then all of a sudden they're all spread out, or they'll go from one location to another location that might or might not be necessarily close by that location. Right. So it, it's much more complicated than saying, oh, well, we think that they're missing over there. Right, exactly. So I think people have sometimes have this idea that we have a bunch of volunteer searchers locked in the closet. And when you call us, we're going to open the door and they're just all going to run out and, right. and start searching. We try to be very strategic in our searches. We spend a lot of time planning. We use, you know, the latest technology that we can get our hands on. We've got lots of partners that help us out. Uh, we have a partner that that flies helicopters for us when we need a helicopter. We've got partners that fly planes for us. We've got partners that help us with our drones. So we've got a lot of partners. If we don't own the equipment ourselves, we have partners that help us out with that sort of thing. So, so you, you're set up here. You're part of the, the, the event here. Right. Are you looking for folks to sign up to be volunteers here at this event? We're looking for two things, financial resources mm-hmm. and also volunteer members. And you can go to our website. It's texasequisearch.org. Okay. And you can read more about us there. And you can also find out how to become a volunteer. Gotcha. And we have a place for everyone. You don't have to have special training. We will train you on what our methods are and our processes. And uh, we can find, if if you're not one that, if you physically cannot go out and do a foot search or you can't ride an ATV or UTV, we'll find something for you to do. You know, we get a lot of tips off of social media. So if you can only sit at home and share our postings on social media, we're okay with that. Yeah. We need that. So you don't necessarily need a horse or a, a new TV or anything like no, that. No, not just, at all. Just walk in not and say, I want to hear, I want to help. Right. Yeah. We just, you need a passion for our mission, which is helping for look humanity. for missing people. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because um, think about it. What would you do? Let's say you have an adult child, 30 years old. And that adult child is very responsible. They go to work every day. They show up. They, they're just a very responsible person. And they don't show up for work one day, and their employer calls you and says, hey, you know, Johnny didn't show up for work today. What do you do? You know, adults have the right to go missing on their own. But you know as a parent that that child would never it's not, not show norm. up for work. Yeah, right. it's not the norm. Right. So or what at do least you... not right, reach out to their parents or a relative or a friend or something like right, that. Right, right. So what do you as an individual do? That's where we yeah. come in and assist and we help families in, in, in all different ways. We have, you know, all different methods of searching for people and we help them in whatever they need to do. And even in places where we're not able to physically get there, we can direct a community on how to do a search on their own. So, so if I if if I have a family member that's missing, I mean, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to go to the police first. Right. And so, do they get you involved, or would that be up to me? If they say, well, you know, they're they're 42 years old, you know, there's not much we can do. If they decided to go off on a permanent vacation. Right. Right. So, um, one of our criteria is. We have to, you have to have reported that person missing to law enforcement b- before we will get involved. Okay. And we never know when a missing person case is going to turn into a criminal case. So we want to get permission from law enforcement in order to get involved in a case. So, okay. so they don't necessarily come, law enforcement doesn't necessarily contact you. Sometimes they, Sometimes do. they do. Sometimes they do. We get contacted by both family members and law enforcement. And, you know, people will always want to know, well, what's your typical case? There are no typical cases. Every one of them has unique circumstances. And we have seen, we think we've seen everything. Mm -hmm. And then we get another phone call and something, it's something different. So basically it's a manpower issue. It is. Either through the, through the police departments uh, and volunteers like yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because law enforcement is spread so thin, you know, people see a, TV show in one hour, you know, you've got this clue that leads you to this (laughs) and leads you to that. We wish it was that easy. But it's, well, they wouldn't need you if it was that exactly, easy. Exactly, exactly. And honestly, we'd like to be out of business, but the demand for our services has just gone up exponentially. Especially Speaking of that, we're, we're, so they're going to raise a lot of money here and give it to you. Mm-hmm. Where does that money go? What, what do you do with that? So we often get the question, if you're a volunteer search organization, why do you need any money? Well, we have our, our phones are answered 24 hours a day, so we never we always have a live body who answers that phone. We have to pay for an answering service. 
our insurance coverage is ridiculously high because nobody really does what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have equipment needs. We have right. vehicle, vehicles. We did a search on Monday in Farmers Branch, Texas. So we needed lodging for all of those searchers that went up there for that and, you know, pay for their meals. I mean, that's the least we can do is pay for their meals. As a volunteer, right? So right. Th that's an interesting question. So if somebody calls you from El Paso, I mean, there's four or five million people here in the Houston area easily. Right. Somebody calls you from El Paso, do you – do you try and find or have people out there, or do you actually say, okay, guys, we need to go to El Paso because we think this is worth us doing? It depends on the circumstances of a case. And I'll give you, a, for instance, recently we had a case in Florida where the family was actually looking for this person. She was in her 70s. She went missing in the middle of the night, and we knew she was in her car. So um, the daughter had contacted us and wanted us to send people there. Well, at the time, we had so many other searches going on that we didn't have the resources to send a whole team there. So we sent one person there. And, of course, you know, we flew them there. They had the hotels to stay in, so we had to pay for those expenses. But he was able to work with law enforcement and the daughter of that person, and we were able to narrow down the area, and she was found not long after our person Because the training and stuff, that person, the search yes. uh, criteria, that, the things that you've taught somebody like right, that. Right, exactly. That's pretty cool. Exactly. And, you know, um, I think sometimes just our presence there uh, brings a higher level of attention to that case. Not only that, but a peace of mind for the individual. Right, right. right. Because there's nothing worse than not knowing. Right. Even if it's a bad outcome, that's better than not knowing what happened to your loved right. one. Need the closure. Yep. Right, right. Interesting. So what are you doing today? So we've got a booth set up over here. I see somebody looking at us with a straw yeah. hat on. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? That some of our volunteers are over there working at our booth. They're waving at us there. Can you hear us over there? <laughs> yeah? Okay, good. Well, I hope everybody is stopping by and saying hello, shaking hands. Signing up. Well. Yeah. Making We're donations. We're kind of waiting for you to have, have, you know, kind of like a, a orchestra pit over here yeah. of volunteers <laughs> to go, yay. But I <laughs> oh, guess that's, us. That, that's coming <laughs> yeah. later. That's I'm you. sorry. <laughs> that's us. Yeah. We're so going to march over there. If anybody wants to stop by our booth today and volunteer, sign up to be a volunteer, or they can go on our website. It's txeq.org. Oh, my God. Wait. T-X-E-Q. T-X-E-Q. -E That's what I said. Dot O-R-G. Okay. Got it. Got right. it? Yeah. He's That's, got it. That's the short version. All right. They can go on our website and learn more about our organization and how to become a volunteer member. Well... And what we do once we do... Um, do you have new volunteers? We do have some volunteers. No, new ones. New ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got lots of new volunteers. We get new volunteers every month. Do you? Yeah, and here's the way it works if you want to be a volunteer. If we have a large-scale search, and that means we've done our recon, we've done all of our research. We don't do investigation per se, but we do our research to narrow down the search area. Then we will activate a full-scale search. And you, if you were a volunteer with us, you would get an automated phone call that tells you what time you need to be there, any special instructions, and where you need to park. Um, and then if you can show up, you show up. If you, don't, if you can't make it, you don't have to call us and let us know. Because we've got such a large number of people that are already signed up, we always get the number of people that we need. So, so if, I'm, if I'm working or mm -hmm. I, I'm scheduled to go to work or something, then I just say in my mind, sorry, I just mm -hmm. don't show up and, yeah. and you're good. Or you good. could call in sick. <laughs> well, but if I was already there. He's you know. done that before. Yeah. yeah well, so, he, do, do you that was pretty much every day because I think he worked for Southwestern Bell. <laughs> yeah. Eight, oh, so did yeah. I back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sorry. do you participate in searches yourself? I do. I do. Not as many as I used to because we've got so much work on the business side of it. I try to take care of the business side. Okay. And my counter takes care of the search side. Do you guys have an office? We do. We Where do. is it? It is in Dickinson, Texas. Mm -hmm. It's right not too far. Uh, it's on 517, not too far off of 45. We used to be in the oldest shopping center in Dickinson, Texas. And the way that started, it was Tim Miller's construction office. And when I say construction office, I mean lumber, tools. <laughs> Concrete. Dirty, yeah. nasty, you name uh -huh. it. And um, when he decided to start Texas EquiSearch, he just built a wall down the middle of that office. So it was Tim Miller's construction over here and Texas EquiSearch over here. And we were all in one big room, and there was about three of us working in the office. And, and we really didn't have room for volunteers to come in and help us. We didn't have a phone for them. We didn't have extra computers. So about a year and a half ago, we decided we'd like to get into a real office space. And... 
a guy showed up in the parking lot that day with a check that paid for a rent for the whole year. Wow. Nice. Wow. Very nice. nice. Well, you know, Dickinson also is famous for something else. Tell us, Don. Houston International Speedway. Yep. Ah. Oh. Drag strip. You know where the Walmart is there on I-45? Yes. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> is the location where the drag strip used to be. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know that. It Didn't kind know. of ran parallel with 45. Didn't but. know that. I've learned something new today. Well, there was, you go. Uh, That's what uh, I'm, worthless information. Gay That's what Pontiac, wasn't it? Weren't they, they were down the big, at the other end. Yes. Yeah, they were the big sponsors. Gay Pontiac. That's correct. Yeah. Don's not allowed in antique stores anymore because no. we're afraid they won't let him leave. Oh. No. No, they've offered to keep me there <laughs> permanently for <laughs> sales as one of the on antiques. You know, standing <laughs> out front by the other wooden Indian. Tammy, thanks oh. so much for all the information. Thank you, Tammy. Research. We appreciate you. Thank you. Raise Thank you for raise being out lots here of money. today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Raise yeah. lots of money. Best of luck. Okay. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream <laughs> on Facebook, YouTube, at InWheelTime.com when we can. Podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider when they're permitted. The In Will Time Car Talk Show continues after this quick break. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.